Thanks for coming over, Mark. What's wrong? Nothing. Why? Erica, don't do this to me. Do what? Well, the way you sounded it on the phone, I thought there was an emergency. Oh, Mark, I'm just excited. I can't wait for you to hear. Well, couldn't it have waited until the morning? Call me in the middle of the night. <laughs> hear what? Your sister is going straight to the top. Which one, you or Silver? Oh, Mark, you're impossible. Me, of course, me. And you are going to help me. Looks like I got here just in time. Well, I don't. Why you put up with that? Would you stop, stop it? I beg your pardon. I have forgiven you time and time again, but this time you really have gone too far. Now try to be calm. Tell me what's wrong. Jeremy, I am sorry to bother you, but I didn't know who else to call. Donna isn't home, and I'm here alone with Timothy. I... All right, I heard a noise outside, and, and I am very frightened. What kind of a noise? I don't know. It sounds like someone may be trying to break in. Who is it? it it's Natalie. Listen to me carefully. Call 911 and tell the police what you just, just what you told me, and I'll be right there. Oh, thank you. And now make sure that the door is double locked. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Jeremy, please don't go. She always needs you. But don't you get tired of running to her rescue? Maybe you don't. Maybe you like it. She's frightened. Somebody's trying to get into her apartment. Well, you told her to call the police. That uh, that's good uh, enough. Uh, Silver, I also said I'd be there. I have no time to argue now. I'll talk to you later. Yes, I am alone with my son in the apartment. 2630 Wake Forest Drive, apartment 3G. Hunter. Natalie Hunter. Please hurry. Here in a hurry, Jeremy. Well? Boy, I never knew you were such a slow reader. You want me to finish this or not? No, you've read enough. What do you think? Well, I think it's terrific. Where'd you get it? From Jackson. He gave this to you? Exactly. You stole it? No. Let me rephrase the question, Erica. Does Jackson know that you have this? He doesn't, does he? Oh, hush up. It's just great, isn't it? I mean, it has lots of potential. I mean, I know it's got the wrong slant, but with a little rewriting... You're kidding? It's terrific. Mark, this thing portrays Natalie Hunter like some sort of a saint. Well, I didn't get that impression at all. I think it makes her sound human. Well, there you are. Natalie Hunter's not human. Erica, she was raped. I happen to think she got exactly what she wanted. I do. Well, I don't, and I don't believe you. Mark, Natalie Hunter has lied and cheated her way through life. Well, it finally caught up with her, that's all. Oh, once this is rewritten, this is going to be fabulous. And besides, it's a wonderful vehicle for me. Fabulous for what? As a project, Mark. This movie is going to do for me what from here to eternity did for Frank Sinatra. You're going to make a movie? Not a movie, this movie. Does Travis know about this? No, but once he does, he'll support me. Oh, Erica, this doesn't sound like a very hot idea to me. Mark, I am already working with Miles Barrett. Miles Barrett? What, the acting guy? Do you know him? Yeah, well, no, uh, by reputation, Erica. Natalie must have retained the artistic rights to this. No, of course not. 
Well, at least the film rights, and there's no way she's going to let you play the title role. Boy, leave it to you to be the voice of doom and gloom. Someone's got to be realistic around here. I know Natalie better than anyone, and I will deal with her. Oh, oh darling, hi. 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 Here you. <laughs> oh. Hi, Mark. Hi, Travis. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Good. <laughs> How's Bianca? Oh, she's wonderful. She's fast asleep. <laughs> and you? How about you? How was I'm your day? Great. How was your day, darling? I, oh, I want to hear all about it. Did you have dinner? Yeah, yeah. I grabbed a bite with uh, with more. I'm sorry I'm so late. How about you? Did you eat? I'm uh, not yet, but I will. Yeah. I just enjoy it. He said sometimes it's better be lucky than be good. Don't worry. Jesus still loves you, friend. So, you look like you're getting plenty of exercise, are you? Well, I'm working outside most of the time. Oh, well, good. You look more relaxed. It's nice to see. Good. I'm working out at the gym. I'm trying to keep myself in shape. <laughs> good for you. Oh, before I forget, I have something for you. What is this? Something you like. Chocolate chip <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Did you bake them? <laughs> no, they're quite safe. I bought them. Great. Tone? No, they're for you. So, tell me something. What do you hear from Adam and Stewart? Um, well, this arrived today. As you can see, the wedding plans are going full speed ahead. I'm glad. He sounds happy. Aren't you concerned that he's marrying a woman with AIDS? Oh, come on, Sky. Don't say that. Adam tells me he had a long talk with him, and Stuart seems to understand the situation. Do you believe that? He's never seen Stuart more happy in his life. He loves Cindy. But she's dying. I know she's dying. I just hope he's able to get through it. Well, I hope so, too. Look, sweetheart, they've got so little time left. You understand? And I want them to make the best of their time. I just, don't you just think that they'd be better off by ending things now? You are one lucky fellow, Chandler. You get some beautiful visitors. This is Sky Cudahy, my cousin, Jeb Tidwell. Hmm. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, by the way, fellas are getting a little poker game going downstairs. You want to join in? I'll let you know how I feel. Yes, indeed. A very, very lucky man. You know, close-knit family, a little help from the good book, get a man through the tough times. Yeah, you're right about that. You don't like him, do you? I don't know. He's some kind of preacher or something. No, I don't like him. He's not going to bother you, Skye. No, 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 of course not. What is it? Do you know that guy? What is it, Sky? Why are you reacting like that? Um, he was at the goal post the other night. He got really drunk, and uh, Tom had to kick him out. Well, he's probably not going to remember that. Yeah, I was just really surprised to see him here, that's all. How are you and Tom? We're doing fine. Actually, he's going to be wondering where I am if I don't get home. Hey, thanks for visiting me. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. It means a lot to me, too. Are you sure there's nothing that I can bring next time, something that you'll need? No, not unless you want to do some more baking. Oh, of course. <laughs> Sky, what is it? Well, nothing. nothing. Come on, something's wrong. You seem disconnected. Well, it's, um, it's Uncle Stuart. You know I worry about him. Sky, you can't lose life for him. I know. Besides, he's happy. We should be grateful. I love him. I get afraid for him. I can't help We him. all love him, but we don't know how long we're going to live. None of us do. We can't be sure of any of that. Well, you are going to be out of here before you know it. Yeah, I'll hold on to that thought. Okay.
Hey, Matt, you got a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. What is it? Susie wasn't feeling too well, so I told her she could go home. Uh, I didn't think you'd mind. You were on the phone. Oh, thanks. Uh, everything else okay? Oh, yes, everything's fine. Ruby's uh, covering for her. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're a good man, Langley. It was a smart move hiring you. Well, I have to admit, I wasn't, a, wasn't quite sure that I'd work in with this younger generation. <laughs> you seem to be fitting in just fine. And you seem to be working very late. Oh, it's a uh, first quarter tax assessment. This thing is a pain in the butt. Wait a minute. It's not like you to be concerned like this. What's wrong? You're not your old self tonight. Uh, I got a lot on my mind. Well, if you want to talk about it, I'm a good listener. You don't live with a woman like Phoebe without having to be, you know. Well, Langley, it's just something that I have to work out myself. Why don't you go home? I'll lock up for you. Thanks, but I'm uh, camping out right over there for the night. You go back to work. We're short-handed, remember? Aye, aye, sir. Now, Father, when are you going to stop? I have begged, cried, pleaded. I've gotten angry with you, and you never stop interfering. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stand by and watch my daughter ruin her life. Now, if you call that interfering, then all right, I plead guilty. Oh. Well, obviously, I've walked in on another unpleasant scene. What is it? What happened this time? I was at Cliff's tonight. Oh. I see. No, no, you do not see. See, this is what the problem... You do not see at all. I went over there tonight to divide up our possessions, and that's what's left in those boxes. That's what's left of my marriage to Cliff. Oh, enough, really. No. Now, you're gonna have to start dealing with this, and dealing with this now, because my marriage to Cliff is over, and I'm going to remain married to Matt. Now, you can't expect me to take that seriously. <sighs> Why would he give you up? Don't tell me he doesn't love you, because I know differently. And there's also that child. This is Matt's child. It's time, Nina, for the truth to come it out. It is the truth! And you went over to Cliff's, didn't you? And told him your suspicions. You don't even have to try and lie to me, because it's written all over your face. Well, he deserves to know. So does that monster that you're married to. So does everybody. So we can cope with this whole situation. Wait, you have nothing to do with this, Father. I'm your father. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be grandfather to that child. No, not unless you recognize this as Matt's baby. Oh, you can't mean that. Yes, I do. And believe me, unless you stop undermining me and everything that I do, you will never get to know this child, this little boy or this little girl will never be in your life. Don't get comfortable. You are about to leave. Okay, you can relax, Mrs. Hunter. Did you find out who it was? Mr. Hunter caught the perpetrator. He'll be along. Jeremy did. Oh, thank God. You have no idea how terrified I was. <laughs> oh, this little fellow? <laughs> A cast. <laughs> I think she's as frightened as you are. <laughs> I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I am so embarrassed. There's no need to be. These things happen. Well, I, I was so sure it was a prowler. Oh, no. She was caught up in the tree. She couldn't come down. <laughs> That's what you heard. Mm? I am so <laughs> terribly sorry. I troubled you over a cat. We're just glad it was nothing serious. Well, if you don't need us, we'll be getting back to the station. Oh, yes, of course. Well, well, thank you for coming anyway. I, I uh, really was very glad. Glad to be of help. Good night. Good, Good night, night, gentlemen. Oh. You created quite a stir, didn't you? Oh, the 
poor thing. I wonder who it belongs to. Well, there's no caller. Maybe she's a stray. Oh. Would you like some milk? Mm -hmm. I've got some milk. Let me go get some milk for it. You want to try to hunt a cuisine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're too nervous. You have to relax first, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I hope this is okay. Oh, you want okay. some milk? I want some of that. You want a little milk? Hey, milk, milk, milk. What do you think? Mm, she's not sure. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy, for, for coming. I'm sorry I had to call you so late. Don't let me keep you. I'm really all right. You had a bad scare. I'll stay with you for a few minutes. I feel rather guilty about keeping you out. <laughs> Don't be. Where's, where's Wilma? Oh, she's at church. Here, honey. Really? At this hour? Oh, no, no. Playing bingo tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's better. <laughs> you really are. You're so patient with me. I don't know too many men who would be this nice after I've sent them on a wild goose chase. Come on, we're friends. You can call me anytime. I wish you'd give this a little more thought. Mark, I am determined to do this. Now, will you come with me to New York to meet Miles Barrett? You want to do this tomorrow? Yes. Well, I don't know what good I can do, but if that's what you want... Oh, I'll... Mark, thank you. Oh, I knew I could count on you. Together, we can convince Miles Barrett to give us the go-ahead on this. What are you, together? Yes, of course. I, I need your support. I need your help. Mark, that's why I want you with me. Mark, I am going to be so incredible in this part. Erica, you know that I love you, don't you? Yes, and I love you. The... Then listen to me. I'm not completely sold on this idea. Even if it weren't about Natalie, I don't think you should be taking on something that's quite so ambitious. Not now, anyway. Why? For one thing, you just got married. For another thing, you have a baby. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have that kind of time to devote to a movie. Mark, I want this, and I want this badly, so what time should I pick you up? Uh, uh... Whatever time you like, I suppose. This is your idea. Okay, great. I'll be by around 8 in the morning. All right, 8 o'clock. I'll be ready. Okay, bye. Night. 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 He was really tired. Now. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, the baby. Is the baby okay? Is oh, sleeping? yeah. She's still sleeping. Well, where were you all this time? Watching her. Oh, I'm a proud daddy. Yeah, she's getting more beautiful every day. I know. So is her mom. What a nice thing to say. Come sit down. I want to hear all about your day. I want to hear everything. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, Ms. Blackthorne and I are working on a little deal. And if it comes through, <laughs> you and I are going to be several million dollars richer. <laughs> what do you mean, if? Of course this deal's going to go oh, through. I like your optimism. <laughs> well, am I or am I not married to the, the most wonderful and smartest business brain <laughs> in the whole business? You am. Oh, Travis. Everything is happening just the way I knew it would. And how's that? You and me and the baby. I mean, everything is Louder and 
louder. It was coming from a room upstairs. When we got there, the sound was practically deafening. It was coming from one of the closets. The door started to shake. And the sound got even louder. We were so nervous, our heart was pounding in our chest. We didn't know what to do. Are we staying there? Are we running out? What did you do? We opened the door. What was in it? Wrapping paper. <laughs> Wrapping. <laughs> that is awful. That is just awful. <laughs> Alex used to tell this story, and I would watch my friends caught up in it. <laughs> if Alex would still al be alive today, he would like to tell the story to Timothy. Well, I tell you what, you can tell the story to Timothy, but when he is older. Well, you'll be surprised. One day he will enjoy being frightened. Oh, perhaps he will. I don't. I never have. That's a terrible story. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. For what? Not just for tonight, for all the nights, all the days. Oh, come on, you don't no. have to thank me. After the rape, I've been trying very hard to deal with it. That's true. And you know what? I'm very proud of you. Oh, I don't think I did a very good job of it all at first. I know I tried to push you and everyone away from me. But I'm very grateful you didn't give up. Thank you for standing by me and for being my friend. You're a very important part of my life, Natalie. You and Timothy. A very important part of ours. going to just a second sweetheart I'll be right there I'll sleep well you too good night I was shocked. I didn't expect to see you there. Well, that works both ways. Well, you still haven't answered my question. What were you doing there? Same thing you were, visiting a friend. Ross is my cousin. Look, let's, let's talk about what's important, okay? Is Cindy Parker leaving town or not? I don't know. Well, then find out. I thought you were worried about her and your uncle. I am. Well, then ask some questions. Get some answers. Did she tell anyone that she was locked up in that house? Of course she told people. She was terrified. But she didn't say anything about whether or not she was going to leave town. I don't know. So she's still staying with that uh, cop and his wife. Yes. Seems to me Miss Parker needs a bigger scare. Doug, I don't know. You want to get her out of your uncle's life, don't you? Then we got to move in for the kill while she's still upset. What do you have in mind? An all-out campaign. Whatever it takes to make the people in this town aware that Cindy Parker is a ticking time bomb. Well, how are you going to do that? Blanket the town with, with flyers. Hire a pilot. Have him, have him drop them all over the whole area. I know. The only problem with that is uh, it's going to cost a lot of money. Well, how much? Well, ten grand should do it. That's a lot of money. Well, that's for a good cause. Do you think you could swing that kind of bread? Let's just hope that this takes care of things. Not to worry. It's as good as that. Come on, Langley. I'll buy you a drink. Sit down. Well, well, well. And a drink with the boss. Well, you put in a long, hard day, I'll tell you. Working for you is a pleasure, sir. <laughs> Here you go. Here's one. 
One for you, one for me. <sighs> to your health, uh, friend. Smooth, man. Mm. I like my Kentucky. One more. Uh, you are taking a taxi I'm home tonight. Driving, All right. I'm not driving. There you I go. don't know how to drive after this. Mm. Smooth. To your health. And your health, Langley. Last chance. Why don't you go home and let me lock up? Oh, boy, Langley. Oh, it's good. No, my friend, you worry too much, huh? Well, I mean, there's nothing more to be done. Well, I'll sleep like a log on this, Butte. Well, it doesn't look very comfortable to me, but you're the boss. Yeah, yeah. Look, you go on home, you put in a long, hard day. Well, if you're sure there's nothing more to be done. Good night, Langley. Good night. Hello, Nina. Hi, Langley. It's good you? to see you. Good to see you. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I've come to pick up my husband. Uh-huh. Why don't you go home and get some rest? You look beat. I am tired, but... won't be able to sleep if you're not there. Well, why don't you try? Matt, why are you being this way? Nina, I've done all I can. I really have. But I can't sit around and watch you crying over your relationship with Cliff. I wasn't doing that. Oh, yeah? Then what was it I walked in on? You and Cliff taking a nice little trip down memory lane? No, you know, the end of a marriage is sad. And Cliff and I, it wasn't all bad times. I'm not going to pretend that just to make you feel better. Now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. My marriage to Cliff is over. And I love you. And I want to spend my life with you. You really gonna sleep on that thing? Yeah, it's not so bad. Okay. I'll have to sleep here too. You, uh, you think there's enough room on there for two? Well, I hope so. <laughs> A little unsteady. <laughs> well, I think, uh, we're at an impasse. Tell Mr. Whitehead when he calls again that his estimate is absolutely ludicrous, and uh, well, if we can't do any better than that, why, we'll just take our business away from him, all right? Now, anything else, sir? Um, Mr. McDonald called again. Who's that? McDonald, from the Canadian Wildlife Association. Oh, yeah. Seemed most anxious to talk to you. Mm. I think the rest of these can wait. Well, I'll get back to him later. Okay. Good morning. Oh, Silver, come on in here. Come on in. Am I too early? No, no, no. Martha, I, I don't know if you've met uh, Erica's sister. I don't believe I have. Uh, Silver Kane. This is my secretary, personal assistant, Martha Stern. Very nice to meet you. Oh, I'm very glad to meet you, too. Now, if you will excuse yes. me. Oh, Martha, would you get us some coffee, please? Of course. Thank you. <sighs> you have lovely offices. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you approve. It's, it's rather nice and secluded when we built the plant where we made sure that we could preserve all the natural surroundings. Oh, it's a very pleasant atmosphere to work in. Good. It'd be a pleasure to show you around. Just sit down. Thank you. Gorgeous day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Well, there's definitely a feeling of, of spring in the air. I could feel it first thing I stepped out of the house this morning. Wonderful, wonderful thing about spring is um, that feeling of new beginnings. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. Look a little tired. But then I, I don't suppose you're used to 
hours like this, are you? Oh, no, actually, I, I'm an early riser. I just didn't get very much sleep last night. Oh, that's a pity. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Insomnia, you know. It happens sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's an old remedy, but have you ever tried warm milk? <laughs> yes, as a last resort. But last night was a... Yes. Nothing. Well, what's the matter? Is it Jeremy? Oh, I'm, I suppose I shouldn't have said anything. No, it's all right. Well, I, I just don't like to see you so distressed. If there's anything I can do... There's nothing anyone can do. I'm afraid I'm losing him. To Natalie. That's all it was. Well, I just thank heaven Jeremy was actually able to get over here. Yeah. So what are you going to do with him? The cat. Actually, I've grown very attached to her. Her? Oh. I bet Timmy would love a pet. Oh, I'm sure he would. Uh, forgive me for asking, but what about Wilma? Well, I'm afraid she thinks little Miss Whiskers here is a plot to make her sneeze to death. Ah, allergic. Horribly. Well, far be it for me to come between a mother and her daughter. But I think you ought to think about this long and hard. Oh, don't think I haven't, Donna. No, I'm afraid little Missy has to find a new place to live. I was thinking I could oh. put a description of her on the bulletin board in the laundry room. Then I have to take her to a shelter. Oh, poor little girl. Look at that sweet face. Yeah. Don't you think Emily Ann would love a kitty? Well, hmm? she has been kind of blue since Benny left for Boston. Donna, I think it's fate. All right. All right, sold. I'll oh. take, take her. <laughs> Donna, you're a saint. Yeah, I'm a saint. Oh. You know what amazes me is that you can keep Timmy off of this thing. Well, when he's here, I can't, but right now he's uh, with Mother as she sneezes her way to the park. I will just bet that Palmer put out a few shekels for this baby. I suppose. You think it was just for Timmy? Well, I think I'd look pretty silly on it. Oh, come on. Now, you know what I mean. It is not unheard of for a man to try to weasel his way back into a girl's heart by cozying up to her baby. Oh, oh Palmer, that's not his way. You sound so sure. I am. I ran into him at the Chateau last night. Mm. Oh, don't be like that. I told you it was an accidental meeting. I only bring it up because it was very clear he is sincere about wanting to make Timmy happy. This is not a Trojan horse. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you know Palmer pretty well, but uh, so do I. And I'll tell you what else I know. Palmer, at his most innocent, is Palmer with a scheme up his sleeve. It's open. Bonjour, mon ami. Well, isn't it a little early for a saloon keeper? Oh, not this one. Hey, how about giving me a little rematch on that uh, racquetball game, huh? Today, I'm sorry, I can't have too much to do. Oh, wouldn't you know? I'm feeling great, feeling like I could wipe the court up with you and you're copping out. Things are better between you and you? A lot better, thanks to you. What have I done? Well, you know, the other night what you said, it made a lot of sense, you know? So, you and I talked. Well, we talked about everything. Got everything out into the open, and we both feel a lot better. Good. It usually helps if you clear the air. Say, have you ever thought of going into counseling? You know, male, female relationships? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd be a big success, yeah. I'm quite an expert. What about the contracts with the printers union? They could go out next month. I don't know. Delaney is meeting with their attorneys tomorrow. You should have a better idea then. Which reminds me, what's the story with that? Trend circulation, any increase? Sorry, I haven't had a chance to check yet with everything else going on. I'll get to it first thing, all right? Uh, yeah, please do. That's important. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Have a seat. Well, I see you're your usual cheery self. Don't take it personally. I don't. 
Have you had breakfast? Hours ago. I've got some good news for you. Yeah, I thought that might perk you up. What is it? Biodynamics is up three and three eighths. Ah, terrific. Sell. No. No? Not yet. Travis, don't be greedy. It was risky when we bought it. It's still risky. Get out now before you lose your shirt. What do you think? I think it's going up. I agree. We'll hold. Okay. I hope you don't regret it. Just a little bit longer. You know, Pamela is right more. You really ought to learn how to relax. Travis, how can I relax with everything that's been going on lately? I, I don't know. You just switch to decaffeinated coffee or something. Um, I want to get to the bank before I go in, so I better get going. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait, don't, don't rush off. Erica and her brother are in town. Uh, her brother? Yeah, well, half-brother, actually. Mark Dalton. He's a very nice guy. Uh, where are they now? In the village. Yeah, but they should be coming up here pretty shortly. Why don't you stick around and, uh, I mean, after all, I think it's about time you finally met my wife. I can't help the way I feel. I honestly think that she made up the whole thing just to get him over there. You sure you're not jumping to conclusions? I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'm just paranoid. There have been so many incidents, and I just can't help thinking that she's a scheming, conniving... I'm sorry, Palmer. You must think I'm awful going on like this about the woman you were married to. Hmm. Well, you, you know how that turned out. Yes, but you loved her. And I, I usually don't go around bad-mouthing people, but it... If you knew how many times she's just stopped by the gallery for no apparent reason, and, and every time we go out, when we manage to go out, we in, invariably bump into her. Well, that could become very annoying, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sure that you have more important things oh, to do no, with your time no, no, than to live dear, my, my dear, No, no, no. Now, listen. Your sister and I are very, very close, and for that reason alone, I'm interested in you, really. Now, I understand that you've had a, um, well, a difficult time over these past few years. And I'd like to do something to make it easier, if I can. Hmm? I've, had, I've had some disappointments myself. I, well, I lost a wife and I lost a son. I know. I'm sorry about that. And now my daughter is, uh, well, she's involved in a marriage that I certainly, I, well, I, I just don't approve of it. And there you are, you know. It's, uh, well, it's kind of lonely. And work. Work here is a blessing at a time like this, but it's a, really not a good substitute for companionship. Anyway, uh, really what I'm getting at is I, I was hoping that you and I might be friends. What do you say? I would like that. All right, now I want to know, what's this big secret? I'll tell you in time. Oh, gosh. Mark, maybe Mark will tell me. Probably. No, he won't. He's sworn to secrecy. Sorry. <laughs> After all the arrangements are worked out and finalized. But when will that be? Don't look at me. <laughs> Soon, very, very soon. Oh, you're going to be so proud of me. I already am. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, me? I'm so hyper already. No, you have coffee. <laughs> May I get you something, sir? Yes, a cup of coffee, please. So, where is this uh, Ms. Blackthorne? Wasn't she having breakfast with you? She had to make a call. She'll be back in a minute. Oh, dying to meet this woman my husband is spending all his time with. Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Oh, Ms. Blackthorne asked me to give this to you. Oh, thank you. What is it? Something came up, she had to go. Oh, well, I'm disappointed. Mark, should I be insulted? If you like. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm getting the feeling this woman doesn't want to meet me. Well, too bad for her. Because I really enjoy having this delightful company, all you three handsome men, all to myself. <laughs> Yes, 
right? Will you stop worrying? I know the house. I know Pine Valley. It's a piece of cake. Just tell me when. Tonight. Not much time. It has to be tonight. Tonight it is. Too bad you can't come watch. I hate fires. Yeah, not me. I love it. It's got to be a clean job. You're talking to a pro. It'll be a beauty. I'll be in touch. Good morning, America. Michael J. Fox on his role in Bright Lights Big City. Nine.